More than three centuries after its extinction, we have been able to recreate what the dodo bird must have looked like. Of course, there are artist depictions and there are composite skeletons, uh, but they actually weren't the complete picture. Th using 3D laser scanning, we have a more complete picture. So it looked um, a lot thinner. Also bright blue. No. <laughs> I mean, my skeleton's bright green, but. Right, that's all that Mountain Dew. <laughs> uh, so this is a virtual model Scientists were able to create uh, with the skeleton of a single bird, which was found more than a century ago uh, by a barber, an amateur collector. <laughs> um, but we didn't, I mean, in pictures we have it looked, looking much more stout. Mm -hmm. And I think with this more complete version or more complete scanning, we were able to see actually what it looked like and examining the bones. Uh, for instance, it has a lack of a keel, which is a, a big like sternum breastbone. Uh, it, it, it indicates they didn't ha they didn't fight each other. There mm -hmm. weren't there wasn't a lot of dodo combat. <laughs> <laughs> dodo combat. <laughs> also, you can tell now that those dodos that said they were big boned were lying. It was fat. Oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dodos, sorry. Well, you know. <laughs> It's our fault, they're dead. Yeah. Uh, sailors ate them, though they apparently didn't taste great, but also they were m mainly killed by rats and pigs introduced uh, by Dutch explorers. Yeah. So fun. Uh, you make a lot of models, and yeah. we see a more complete version through the model. Why, why, why is it this way? Why is this uh, more necessary to make the complete well, picture? You know, well, you can't do a lot of things with the actual bones without damaging or harming them in some way. And then this also, once you have it in the computer, you can do things like you can animate it. Mm -hmm. and they, they were talking about in the article that um, they were animating the skeleton, so you could actually see how it walks, and you mm -hmm. can, uh, you know. You could see the limitations and the extents of all the different joints and understand how the creature actually lived. Mm -hmm. So it's great. And the, the next step, I'm sure they're going to probably 3D print it. They're mm -hmm. probably going to yeah. add muscles to it. I mean, there's a lot that can be taken Robo -dodo. to the next level <laughs> from the <laughs> from the from JJ yes, Robo Dodo. <laughs> Robo Dodo. <laughs> Very cute. You should you should trademark that right yeah, away. I know. <laughs> Done. Because I have every right to this yeah. software. Robo Dodo. We're gonna we're gonna write that right uh -huh. after this show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's it's a really interesting look at the anatomy and a completely unprecedented detail, uh, thanks to 3D laser scanning. Yeah, and, and, there, and it's models. a great technology, and it's become a lot more accessible mm -hmm. than it used to be. Uh, we had a at Industrial Light Magic. We had a hundred and sixty thousand dollar 3D scanner, mm -hmm. and now I'm able to get a four thousand dollar scanner. I mean, with all with computer and all the equipment that is equivalent to that $160,000 scanner. Um, or how has that improved helping you? Well, it, it's like Tron. You can take things in and out of the computer world take at will. Me. Because you have, well, you have 3D printers <laughs> yeah. and you have the 3D scanners. So in, in, in design, especially in, in movies, we can uh, have a sculptor still sculpt something by hand, which is often faster and easier to change mm -hmm. than the computer sculptures. Um, or maybe you know, some directors just prefer to see things in physical reality. And then um, you can take that, scan it into the computer, do further work to it, animate it, do whatever you want. And then you can also 3D print it again if you made changes while you were in the computer. And we, we did a lot of that when I was working with Disney. There's a lot of back and forth and going in and out of the computer. Checks. Mm, yeah. For sure. Well, well, something we've learned from this is uh, how it evolved to its size and maybe uh, relatives to the dodo. So, for instance, uh, naturalists thought it was related to vultures, other birds of prey, rather than the pigeon family. So it, it does help complete our understanding from that point. I, this reminds me a lot of recently we in the news, the Interstellar, uh, they had made a model of, I believe, a black hole. Mm. And it became a more complete f uh, picture for us of how it worked. So yeah. that's, that's super interesting, being able to, to, in essence, construct something to figure out how it works. Yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah, in the black hole in inter Interstellar, I was reading, um, it's funny, I didn't hear about it while working on it, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was reading an article, yeah, they actually modeled the black hole in that movie after the most recent kind Using, of scientific uh, theories that they have on black holes. Equations from Kip Thorne, who yeah. was consulting on that. Yeah. So that's really interesting to, well, it, it's cool to me that we're able to, to see these visualizations and understand them better because of that. For sure, and it's not just in like the professional science community either. This is more accessible to kids or people learning about, you know, anatomy or even like prehistoric bones or things like that. You can physically hold it and put it together and see how it works. And so, if if a school has access to a three D printer, they could download something like this and print it out for students to study as well. 
And this also allows scientists from all over the world to get a hold of that computer model and also work with it, which is amazing because the bones are in That's one right. location mm -hmm. in the world. You know, but that computer model can go anywhere instantly, so. Our computer is grand. Computers what do you awesome. think of the recreation of the dodo and what we're learning about the dodo and how we can apply this technology of 3D laser scanning to other pursuits of knowledge? Let us know what you think below in the comments and please be sure to subscribe.